This is the LifeStraw Peak Series Solo Water Filter, and it's one of the smallest water filters on the market. In this video, I'm gonna review the LifeStraw, show you how it works, test out flow rates, point out where it really excels, where it falls short, and I'm even gonna do a comparison to the Sawyer Squeeze Mini. So let's get into it. The LifeStraw Peak Series Solo Water Filter is the brand's lightest and smallest water filter ever made. It weighs just 1.7 ounces, which is insanely light. Just holding it in my hand, it almost feels like nothing's there. It functions just like any other LifeStraw with nasty water coming up one end and clean water coming out the other end. You can use the suction of your own mouth as you saw in the intro, or it can be screwed onto a standard drinking bottle and used as a squeeze filter system. I also want to mention this video is not sponsored by LifeStraw in any way. Inside the LifeStraw is a micro filter, the same one found on the larger Peak Series filter, and it filters out bacteria, parasites, microplastics, salt sand, and cloudiness out of water. You can actually see part of the filter on the bottom when you unscrew it. With this filter, you can drink out of just about any water source you would encounter when you're out hiking, be it a lake, a river, stream, whatever it might be. LifeStraw has a full rundown of what this thing can and can't filter on its website if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of what this thing can do. It lasts up to 2,000 liters and it will stop working once it reaches the end of its life. That means you don't have to worry about, is my filter still working? Because if water still flows out, then it's still working and it's still making clean drinking water. And it has a supposed flow rate of three liters per minute, which we're gonna test out right now. So I've just filled this up with water from the stream behind me and I'll show you how the life straw works. It screws on to the top and it only works with bottles that have this opening on the top. So it's not gonna screw onto your Nalgene. It's really easy to use. All you do is pour it over and proceed to squeeze. You can see the water is coming out. That water that is coming out is now clean and filtered and ready to drink. As you can see, it's kind of hard to squeeze and you have to use some muscle to get it to actually flow out. I've just squeezed as hard as I can and I could still get water out if I, if I wanted to, but if I was using this in the field, what I would wanna do is re-enter air by unscrewing it a little bit. So then I can have some more resistance to push against. So I've, I've added air and now I can squeeze with a little bit more ease into the filter. And speaking of squeezing, if you could squeeze that subscribe button, I'd appreciate it. So that's how the life straw works. And to test out the flow rate, I have a one liter bottle here. I don't have a three liter bottle, which it says three liters per minute, but we can use this bottle and deduce how fast it will be four liters per minute. I'm only gonna fill this bottle halfway. So I have a mixture of air and water to push against and hopefully I can get all of the water out of the bottle as fast as possible. If I were to fill it up all the way, as you saw earlier, once I got down to about halfway, it would be really hard to squeeze the water out without unscrewing and rescrewing the filter. I'm gonna test this three times with each filter and we're gonna get a comparison of which one flows faster. We're gonna do the first test. As you can see, I filled it to that line. Ready, set, go. about 25 seconds. Okay, life straw test number two. Okay, test number three. Done, 23 seconds, 25 seconds again, and we're done. All right, now for the Sawyer Squeeze Mini. Ready, set, go. Twenty-six seconds. All right, thirty seconds. Forty seconds. So it's a little slower, but honestly, I would say that these differences are fairly marginal. So as you just saw, it works really well as a squeeze filter, but I wanna point out one of the downsides of using this as a squeeze filter. When you go hiking and you run out of water, if you have to purify water with a squeeze bottle, that bottle that you're going to use to purify basically can't be used again until it's properly clean. That means that you'll just have an empty bottle with you at all times while you're hiking after you've already drinking up your clean drinking water. So it adds a little bit of extra weight, but it's really not that big of a deal. This could work out effectively if you're hiking with a partner and you both have your own water bottles. After you use your clean water, you could designate one of your water bottles as the dirty water bottle for the rest of the trip and share the clean water bottle if you don't mind sharing. And of course, for weight conscious hikers, you can just screw this onto the end of a water bottle and drink straight from the water bottle with this screwed onto the top. Of course, it takes a little bit of effort to squeeze and suck the water out, 
but it's not that big of a deal for clean drinking water. And the last way to use this filter is like a regular life straw, just dipping the end into a dirty body of water and drinking straight from the straw itself. You do have to suck decently hard to get water to come out. And this leads me to one of the downsides of this product. Because it's so small, you have to get so close to your source of water to effectively drink out of it. When you're done drinking with the life straw, there's a chance that water could spill from the dirty end to the clean end on the outside. And if there's any calamities in the water, you could potentially be drinking that. Also, because it's so small, if you just happen to drop it in the water while you're already down there, again, you would have to clean the filter before you wanted to drink it. Now, you might think the risk of getting sick from an experience like that to be relatively small, but if you're on a multi-day backpacking trip, or if you're somewhere really remote in the wilderness, or if you're drinking from some really sketchy sources, I don't think it would be worth the risk to lean in and drink directly from the stream with something this small. However, as I mentioned earlier, it works fine as a squeeze filter, so if you're drinking from some really risky sources, I'd probably just stick to that. And at 1.7 ounces, it's hard to beat the utility of something this small and lightweight. I can think of countless adventures that I've been on where I wish I had water when I already ran out of my clean drinking water. Maybe it was really hot or maybe I underestimated how long the hike would take, but having something like this in my pack would have made it way easier to stay hydrated and healthy on the trail. Now, I wouldn't really recommend this filter to be used as the sole water filter if you're on a group trip. I think it would be pretty tedious and time consuming if you're squeezing and filtering water for a bunch of people, especially if you're using it to cook food and clean dishes. And that's why I think this straw is best for personal or partner use. Just throw this thing in the bottom of your pack and use it in case of emergency, and you'll be thankful that you packed this along. Thank you so much for watching my review. If you liked it, consider hitting that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.